techniques to manage Irish prolapse. A combination of cohesive and dispersive viscoelastic is often beneficial in managing both small pupils and iris prolapse problems. Other techniques, however, include the use of iris retractors. Uh, secondly, both closing and resuturing this section is another common treatment utilised. Uh, and this should be followed by commencing the section elsewhere and recreation of the corneal section site uh, to make it longer and more anteriorly placed uh, to reduce the likelihood of further prolapse. Other techniques which are less commonly used include the use of pupillary expanders of which there are various types. In this case, iris prolapse has occurred during INA of the cortex. Sometimes if this occurs at the end of this stage, uh, one can deliberately change one's grip and push sideways to prevent further uh, iris prolapse from the section, that is to create a physical block in the section with the uh, INA probe. However, if prolapse uh, like such as this has occurred early on, it is always better to stop, remove the instrument, replace the iris gently, and then either close the section um, and re-utilize uh, another section, or possibly use uh, iris retractors to tighten the iris um, and pull the iris posterior to the corneal section. In this uh, case, which was referred with an old iris prolapse caught within the corneal section. Uh, the eye was suffering from chronic cystoid macular edema. In cases such as these, it is always important to address uh, any of the potentially precipitative causes of cystoid macular edema, such as here where the iris prolapse, uh, is, which is incorporated within the corneal section and potentially uh, acting as a source of prostaglandin uh, production by releasing arachidonic acids and other pro and preformed inflammatory mediators. When managing this condition, in general, it is always important to fill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. I would usually use a soft gel technique that is a combination of both dispersive to protect the endothelial cells and cohesive viscoelastic uh, substances uh, to provide the best protection and also give good working space and control of the uh, iris tissue. During the process of disinserting the iris from the corneal section, uh, one can see the small area of hemorrhage uh, adjacent to the corneal section where there's been uh, focal induced angle trauma of the iris root. Um, this uh, thankfully was self-limiting uh, but it's something which one should always consider when exercising blunt forces upon the iris tissue whether as in this case or whether when trying to repair uh, iris defects. Iris retractors are valuable instruments to use to facilitate operative views as in this case. Where possible, the iris should be retracted well away from the moving phaco probe so that the probe does not rub and induce iris trauma. This can often best be achieved by placing at least one retractor as close to the section site as possible and if possible, posterior to the section site to retract the iris away from the more anteriorly placed Fecal probe. In this case, after enlargement of the corneal section to facilitate removal of a IOL broken during the insertion process, iris prolapse, as noted, has occurred. There are now two main problems. Uh, one of those problems is that the iris is prolapsing, and secondarily, that the pupil is so small is going to create difficulties both the, for the introduction and then further positioning 
of the toric intraocular lens implant. In this case now the key point was to manage the iris prolapse uh, by way of firstly gently reinserting the iris with uh, the use of viscoelastic uh, material uh, into the eye and then subsequently the tightening of the iris uh, and pulling of it posteriorly under the corneal section by way of two posteriorly placed iris hooks. The pupil enlargement then was sufficient to facilitate toric intraocular lens entry and its uh, uh, appropriate positioning at the correct meridian. So in summary, iris prolapse can be prevented by well created corneal sections which have a sufficient tunnel length and are not too posteriorly placed. When iris prolapse has started to occur it should be actively managed and quickly prior to the iris losing its tone and becoming sticky in which uh, cases the iris will consistently prolapse and will become even more difficult to retain within the anterior chamber. So, so some of the methods to manage iris prolapse uh, have been explained in this short lecture. Um, further videos um, demonstrating some of the uh, more salient points uh, of actual uh, the operative techniques will be demonstrated in the members section within this video teaching site.